This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So what I'd like to do now is give you a little demonstration on columns and specifically site columns and content types. So let's go ahead and bring up here a basic SharePoint site. So this is nothing special. There's been no customization really done to this. It's just sort of a default look and feel you get when you create a, te a team site. And so I have a little website here which is really a site collection. It's a top level site called Contoso Intranet Portal. There's a subsite called HR, that's a part of it. But other than that, really nothing specific or custom. Now, if I were to look at a list, like let's take this task list as an example. So we can see the list down here. I can see a number of columns like the task name, the due date, who it's been assigned to. And if I wanted to create new tasks, I could do so here. And in fact, when I do click to create a new task, um, I can see what some of the other columns are. So that view is not necessarily showing me all of the possible columns. It's seeing some of the basic ones that you see listed here, but I can click show more and see additional column data that I could enter when creating a task, such as percent complete, description, predecessors, priority has been set up as a, as a, drop, uh, a drop box with some choices, as has task status. So let's go ahead and click Cancel. And let's say that I wanted to create a custom column for this list. Now, a lot of times we're creating custom columns for completely custom lists. A task list just happens to be a, uh, a fairly you know, built-in standard list, but you may want to extend it. So what I would do is come up to the ribbon tabs up here under List, and you can see a button there for Create Column. So I can create new columns. I could also go to the List Settings which can be found all the way over here on the right side, list settings. And in there will be a, a section that will show me all the columns and allow me to manage and edit the columns, including creating new ones. So here are the task list settings, various different settings that can be configured. If I scroll down and we take a look, right here is a section called columns. And I can see all of the different columns, and I can, of course, create one. Now, let's go ahead and create a column very quickly. And I could give it a name, and let's say I want to call it customer name or customer. Now, it could be a single line of text. So this is where I start to choose the data type. It could be a single line of text, multiple lines of text. It could be multiple choice. And whichever one of these data types I choose, the screen will change slightly down below when we get to the additional column settings section. So the fact that I chose a multiple choice option as opposed to a number or a date and time field or a yes no checkbox, then the options down here are a little bit different so I can enter the choices. So let's say uh, that I would come in here and I would have to specify my customer names like customer one, customer two, customer three, and so on. So on every line, every line, a separate line, will be the drop-down box and the options inside of it. Now, I also have to choose something like, is it a drop-down menu? Is it radio buttons? Is it a checkbox? And so on. Am I going to allow fill-in choices? There's a number of options here that I don't want to get too caught up into in this particular uh, demonstration. But I'll go ahead and click OK. So I've just created a drop box with a few customer names in it and I've made it a, an option in our task list. So if I go back now to the task list, then you will be able to see that we've added a new column, and you can see it right here called customer. So it's a way that I'm adding some metadata about my customers into a list like this. And in fact, when I go to create a new task list, and I click show more down at the bottom, will be my little customer drop list column that I created. Now, from an information management perspective, 
I am forcing people, instead of giving them free form ability to just try type any customer name, I'm forcing them to choose an option. So therefore, when they choose an option, we have consistency in our data. Now, the problem with what I just did is I created that little custom column on a specific task list. It doesn't exist anywhere else. So let's cancel out of here. And let me show you site-based columns so that I can create the column just as I just did and then use it all over the place. I could use it in my calendar list. I could use it in my document library and so on. So where I want to go is I want to go back up to my home page so that I'm working at the top level site. And then in the top right corner is a settings button, a little shaped like a gear. And in here, I'm going to find a number of different options, but I'm also going to find my site settings. So if I click on site settings, this will take me to the various different settings that I can configure at the top level for my site collection and for other site-related settings. But one of the places that I'm looking at are the galleries. This is where I'm focused right now because this is where I can define things like site content types and columns. Okay, so let's take a look at columns. These are site columns. And the process of creating a site column will be almost identical to what you just saw me do when I created a list column. So you can see a whole bunch of columns in here that already exist. Uh, these are just the columns that have been defined in the system by Microsoft. And they come with SharePoint. But I want to create, using this little Create button, a new one. And I'm just going to do pretty much the exact same thing I did before. I'll call it Customer Name or Customer. And once again, I'm going to make it multiple choice, but this is where I can define all my different possible data types for a column. So let's make it uh, multiple choice right here. I'll go ahead and scroll down. Now, it does want me to group it. And I can group it into a place called Custom Columns if I wanted to, or I could place it somewhere else, or I could create a new grouping. All that is is a categorization for your columns so you can more easily find your columns again. So I'll show you that because in a minute we're going to have to find it. Is it a required column? Does it have to re, uh, have information? Does it enforce unique values? You know, there's a few options in there, but let's go ahead and put our customer names in here again. Customer 2, customer 3. Just to differentiate from the other list, I'll add customer 4. It's going to be a drop-down menu instead of radio buttons or check boxes, but that obviously is up to you. Do we allow fill-in choices? Usually not with a drop-down box. And do we want a default value? I didn't do this last time, but I'm going to blank that out so there's no default value. They must choose something. So let's go ahead and click OK. And I've just created a site-based column with all of those customer names in a drop-down list. Okay, it'll show up in here if we scroll down and try to find it. It'll show up under Custom Columns, so you can see it there. I created it called Customer. Now, throughout my site collection, I can go to any one of these lists. Like, let's go to, you know, we could go back to the task list and use it there. We could go to Documents or Calendar or any future ones that we create, and we can add it in. So notice that this is a document library. Currently, there are no documents in here. We could drag files in to upload them. That's a nice little improvement in SharePoint 2013. Uh, or you can click New to browse for them. But the name of the document, who it was modified, or when it was modified, who it was modified by, these are examples of columns. So let's go to our library ribbon. Go all the way over to our library settings. And in here will be our columns. Now, instead of creating one like we did last time on our task list, we said create column, I'm going to add a column from an existing site column. So let's go ahead and pop that up here. Now, to help me find it, I could just scroll for it al uh, alphabetically. But maybe to help me sort and find it, I want to choose the grouping. Remember I said that that was just a categorization. So here's custom columns. And that helps me narrow it down a little bit so I can find the one that I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and click Add. Do we want to add that to the default view? Yes, please. I'm going to click OK. 
And now let's go back to our document library. And in our document library, we'll see that we are now using that additional column. And in fact, whenever I add new documents and upload files, that will be an additional bit of metadata that I can choose from. I could add it to my task list, to my calendar. And the great thing about it is then when we have a new customer, we only have to update that drop list to include their name or to remove one that we don't need anymore. We only have to update it in one place at that central location. And everywhere that's using that site-based column will have it. Now, when it comes to content types, it's quite a similar concept. Because, for instance, I could be working in here. And let's go to uh, the file ribbon. Notice that I'm in a document library. And I can go to the file ribbon. When I click New Document, I want to add a document. Well, there's the ability to add files that you upload from your computer. That's one thing. There's another ability in, a, in SharePoint to create a brand new document based on a template. So instead of uploading something from your computer, you just simply click New, and the working space is this library. So in this case, it would open up a blank Word document connected into SharePoint and would allow me to uh, modify that document, hit Save, and it'll live in this library. This right here is a content type, a blank document content type. But let's say what I really wanted in this particular library is for someone to click the New button and have it come up with a blank uh, expense report, an easy expense report. Well, then I would need to create that as a site-based centralized uh, content type. So let's go back to the top level. And let's go ahead and take a look at our site settings again very quickly. And again, in our galleries, we have site content types. And this is going to show me a list of all the different content types that can live in the SharePoint database and can be managed through SharePoint. And I'm going to create a new one. When I click Create, it's going to walk me through a definition of what I want. Let's say I want to call it an expense report. Okay, now it will have a parent. Every content type you create has some sort of a parent. And usually when we're dealing with things like this, it's document based. So it's a document content type. And I can choose here again, document is the parent. So we pull from a category and then we pull a specific one. And then once again, I'll put it into a custom group of some sort. So I'm creating a content type based on the document content type. So we're inheriting certain properties that all documents share. And I'll go ahead and click OK to create this custom content type. Now, it brings me to the expense report settings. Now, if I go into advanced settings, then what I can do is I can associate a document template. So I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click browse. And we're going to go ahead and take a look here at our example files. I have an expense report. We're going to upload that expense report. Now, this would be just be the layout of the expense report. But I'm saving it in there as a template. So it's not all the numbers yet. Someone's going to fill it in. But this is the template upon which we base all of our expense reports. So I click OK, and it's going to utilize that expense report as uh, the content type template. OK, great. So I have a content type. Now, how do I use it? Let's go to Documents. And let's go back to our document library settings. And in the library settings will be a section. Uh, you'll notice you have columns and you have views. But we don't have anything in here that, um, that shows us content types. That's because by default, the content types that are used in a library are hidden. So if I go into uh, Advanced Settings in my library, you'll see a section here called Content Types. And I have to turn this on. So I'm going to click Yes to allow management of content types. And I'll just leave it at that for now and click OK. Now when it brings me back to my um, settings, 
I can scroll down and I now have a section here called content types. So what I can do, remember the document content type, which was on this library, I clicked the new button and it allowed me to create a new blank Word document. That's the only content type associated. So let's add an existing one from our site content types. Scroll that down to custom and there's my expense report. I'm going to add that in, click OK. And you'll notice now that I have a couple of content types. Now I can change them. I can change the order. When people click the new button, what do they get? I can get rid of the document one if I wanted to. But for now, let's just go back to the document library. And let's go ahead and click that new button. And you can see now that I have a document or a new expense report. And if I click the new expense report, it'll bring up um, Excel and we'll load in that template. I could fill it all in with the numbers of my expense report and hit save into that library. So all of that is to show you that with content types and columns, we can control our data. We can make throughout our entire site collections, throughout our entire farm, we can make our information management architecture or information architecture line up and be controlled through some of these elements in SharePoint. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.